here tonight. And uh, what about hearing a story about somebody called Billy Christmas? He's the, the young boy in a story written by Mark Pritchard, who lives in Oxford and joins me now. Hello, Mark. Hi, Joe. Hello. Now, it, it, thank you for passing me a copy of the book here, which I... Uh, is it a kid's book? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, but for kids of all ages, I hope. So uh, many of my friends, uh, you know... Uh, actually, I think the oldest person who's read it is 67, and they seem to enjoy it too. Oh, well, well, what's Sorry. Billy Christmas about? Right. Billy Christmas is... Um, it's set down the road in Marlow, actually. So And, it, and the book works. If you know Marlow, you'll, you'll understand the landscape of the book. But uh, Billy Christmas boy with a big problem. His uh, dad disappeared the previous Christmas day, went out for tea for the milk and vanished. And uh, the following year, Billy's actually looking after his mum. He's very withdrawn because of his dad disappearing. And he decides they're going to celebrate Christmas. So to, in case his dad's passing, he doesn't want him to see the house unlit. So he gets a Christmas tree and it comes with 12 unusual decorations. Sets it up and goes to bed. That night, the middle of the night, there's a big noise from the lounge downstairs so he takes the cricket bat creeps downstairs and goes to attack the burglars um, and what he finds is the tree complaining about being tied to the wall by the lights so this is not an ordinary tree uh, this tree explains that it can give him a wish in return for the completion of 12 tasks which are represented by those 12 decorations that came with it so each night just after midnight billy creeps downstairs takes a decoration from the tree and the tree explains what the task will be the following day and if he gets all 12 well then he gets a wish and he uh, uh, wishes to get his dad back all right so now this is your first novel isn't it absolutely yeah all right so, so. Uh, what have you done before now then oh gosh well a little bit of this i was bbc many moons ago um uh, i i work in communications now i used to work in communications for the county council here actually so uh, i've been around and how long have you been writing for what was the draw been writing since my degree in drama um i started out writing screenplays so you'll probably find this quite a visual book um and uh, this was the novel writing is all about finding an idea that'll open out for a whole book and uh I guess uh, I just found the right idea finally, and uh, yeah, it took me three months of first drafting, 10,000 words a week. Crikey. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, now, th this is your first novel, as I say, and uh, we were looking at your profile on Facebook earlier on. You've got right. a lot of people, 76,000 people have liked you. It's not bad, is it? No, it isn't. I hope 76,000 have bought the book, have they? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> that really would be nice. Not yet. Not okay. yet. But, but it, uh, it, have you found that with social media a good way to actually meet your readers? It's and... lovely. I mean, just, uh, just this week, uh, a, a 10-year-old girl from Ireland, Megan, hand wrote me a letter saying how much she enjoyed the book and uh, it's up there on the site actually but, I was uh, reading that earlier on <laughs> and it's sweet isn't it I bless her heart I mean she really put some effort into that letter and, and what does that do you know for you it's strange um, uh, sort of it, you know you know, I've, I've had a couple of really nice endorsements you can probably see them on the back of the book but to get it actually from an 11 year old that I don't know who's really really bought into the book that's that no, this no, 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 no. that's what it's all about that's why i did it it's, it is quite fascinating because you know there's somebody you'll touch with the book you'll never meet that yeah. you maybe will influence to be a writer how does you know it's quite mind that, that would be great uh, if they just read a, uh, another book that'd be a good start you know rather maybe. than just being locked to the tv well ha have, have a listen i'm going to read one of the the better known people who said Catherine granger Ah, yes. uh, uh, NBA gold Olympic medalist, uh, rowing for Team GB, of course, just down the road. I've been lucky enough to follow Billy Christmas from first draft to final print, and each time I find something new and wonderful, treat yourself. There you go. Yeah, yeah, she's a good friend. Um, she uh, she encouraged me, actually. She uh, She's one of these people who just, you know, puts steel in your spine and uh, helped the book when I got stuck a few times, just kept pushing me. Yeah, it, it's interesting with this. So you've had your one idea with with Billy Christmas, and without giving any away or anything away, is can there be sort of Billy Christmas too? Do you think? <laughs> uh, several people have asked me what I'm doing next, and I've got a completely different book in the blocks ready to go. But what my publishers did, because they asked me to change the ending, uh, the the last chapter contains most of the plot points I had for book two, so I made a much better ending. The last chapter is really. <laughs> Pounding, but I've got 
nothing for the next book now. So oh, right. it, it's open. It's it's ready to go. It can be, but um, that not even more daunting. So you sort of got to sit it, there. It is now. People seem to like it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the other thing as well. One thing that struck me. You know, there you are. You're a communications <laughs> man. You've obviously got clearly. You know, view on marketing and everything. The word Christmas limits it to a certain period of time, or does it? Which is why it took five years to get published. <laughs> um, oh, really? Okay. Every time we would go to an acquisition meeting, uh, it would be up against a book that they could sell all year round. Um, so finally, these wonderful American guys, uh, Rose, Salami, uh, Rose Solari, Jimmy Patterson uh, from Allen Squire Publishing in D.C., heard me reading on the fringe of the Oxford Literary Festival in Blackpool's bookshop, who now have the book. And, uh, yeah, they, they grabbed it as soon as they set up their independent press. Oh, Bless them. That's fantastic. And then you're also taking part in the Short Stories Aloud event, which is next Tuesday. Yeah. Which will mean that you're actually going to hear other people performing some of your work, and that must be quite daunting Yeah, as well. we, we did that at the launch. I, I ran and hid to the back of the room so nobody could see my reactions. But it's, it's strange having other people's voices with your words, but uh, it's great. Sarah Franklin, who runs that, has done an amazing job. Are you, when you hear other people reading your stuff, and are you looking at the other people who are listening just to see their reactions? Very much so. Yeah. Very much. That's exactly what I was saying. Well, um, that can be quite daunting and also worryingly humiliating at times. Or Well, yeah. it's interesting. I mean, the, all the beats that you find in the book when you're writing it, other people find slightly different ones. But, and that's fine. It's a different relationship between the writer in the book and the reader in the book. Yeah, that's but, great. Um, I can't wait. I'm going to take. Thank you for this. Can I take pleasure. this home? I'm Absolutely. going to take this home for Tom's Eleven. Is that about the right market? That's Who's perfect. Yeah. Absolutely. In fact, perfect. Tom should come along to the uh, short stories allowed on Tuesday. And then, yeah. So that well, it's your school night there. Ah, right. You've okay. Got to get that past his mother. Yeah. Good luck on that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, look, lovely meeting you. Very uh, nice to meet you. And uh, Mark, we'll uh, look forward to the second book when that arrives and yep. also uh, I should mention uh, Short Stories Allowed is at the Old Fire Station it's next Tuesday half seven perfect excellent stuff it's Thank BBC so Radio no problem BBC Radio Oxford uh, let's get the latest on